Hi everybody, Jeff Marr with STEM School Helens Ranch and joining me is Dr. Karen Johnson, Interim CEO of Cosan Schools and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're talking to you because you have announced that you are retiring from education and you are putting STEM School Helens Ranch and all those memories in the rear view and we wanted to talk to you just about that and your next chapter because obviously you've been working in education for a long time, you've been with STEM for a long time. In fact, tell people how long you've been here. Um, so I just completed my eighth year here uh -huh. at STEM. Okay, and how long have you been in education? Um, 33 years. 33 years. Yes. And so let's talk about your, your last day. When is that coming and when's that transition happening with Matt? Sure, so this month, um, uh, Matt started with us and him and I um, have an onboarding plan and my last day will be the that last week of August. Okay, so you're going to so help him with the stuff. transition. There's a lot yeah. to take on, a lot to understand, and so you'll be here for that. Yes. So how did you arrive at the decision that now was the time to wrap it up? <laughs> well, um, you know, the last few years I'd been um, thinking about retirement, kind of mm -hmm. getting to that age and that that point in your career, and um, you know having the opportunity this year as the interim CEO really did highlight um, kind of that appropriate time to to um, to move on and um, explore some other things and do some relaxing for myself and my family. Leads me to my next question: What are some of the things that you're going to be focused on? Once you're officially done here at STEM, what will you be doing? Doing some traveling or just spending time with family? Yeah, I think primarily um, I have six grandkids and yeah. four of them are um, under the age of five. And so <laughs> um, I want to spend some time with them before they start their journey into school and um, be able to, to live and um, you know, have fun with them and um, experience them as, as young kiddos. And, um, and then spend that time with the older ones as well. Oh. Um, and, you know, my own uh, kids that I have as grown adults, um, it'll be nice spending time with them. And then my husband and I, he retired last year. And so mm -hmm. um, he's had some time to himself. <laughs> and now I'm ready to join him in that journey as well. But we do plan on doing some traveling. Um, I have um, some folks that I'll be hiking with. I um, mm -hmm. want to try to get back into that habit of enjoying the, the outdoors and hiking and gardening um, and, um, and then just spending time sitting around and reading yeah. as well. Right? And, and your kids, are, do they live local or are they spread out? They do. They live locally. Yeah. Um, we're all up north in that Broomfield, Thornton area, Brighton yeah. area. So it's good to have everybody together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are. And now that you talk about how your husband retired too, I mean, that's great timing that you can both do that. And congratulations, because uh, that's, a, that's a great milestone uh, to wrap up a, a really solid career in education. So prior to STEM, if you can just summarize what you did and, and where you were before you came here. <laughs> sure. So um, when I first started in education, I was the director of an early childhood center mm. um, right out of college. And, um, and then I decided to go into the public school sector. And um, I taught fifth and sixth grade um, for 16 years um, at an elementary level and then having the opportunity to move elementary students to the middle school model. Mm -hmm. Uh, during that time yeah. um, in education. And so it was at elementary and at the middle school and um, primarily focused on um, math and science. But as an elementary teacher, you have background in all of the content areas. But, right. um, you know, at that time, there weren't a lot of educators that were comfortable with math and mm -hmm. science instruction. <laughs> and so um, I really was passionate in those areas. And um, focused on that through my master's degree um, and my PhD work as well. Yeah. Um, and then had opportunities to, um, to open a STEM school um, for a, a K-8 um, in that district. And, um, and that was a huge highlight in my career, you know, as I was teaching and be a leader in that STEM education. Uh, I've worked um, 
I had a partnership with the School of Mines and we worked on developing engineering curriculum for middle mm -hmm. school students mm -hmm. and staff. And we did, I would spend summers um, training teachers in engineering, nice. which was unheard of before <laughs> yeah. that time. And, um, and so that was really enlightening for me and um, very rewarding. And um, just keeping that focus of, of bringing STEM education and that PBL model um, to staff, like teaching them, mm -hmm. and in turn, knowing they're influencing the educational outcomes of students Absolutely. Um, in that arena as well. Um, and then before I came to STEM, um, I was actually the science coordinator in mm -hmm. one of the major districts in the metro area. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that for a couple years, but really my passion came back to students and staff and working directly with them. So when the opportunity came up to join STEM mm -hmm. and begin the elementary STEM program, um, that uh, was definitely the highlight of, of some of my career choices. <laughs> the the perfect cats. job for you because you had already done it before, mm -hmm. like you said, with that K through eight. Yes. So you were brought on to help expand this school. So, I mean, over the years, you must have seen it really change dramatically. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially as we've added the new renovations, but even before that, when we did our expansion. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. I came on um, as as the school had started with middle and high school focus, and yeah. then as those that first group came through um, graduation, that's when we launched the elementary. So that was um, very exciting just to bring to life everything mm -hmm. that I had learned as a teacher and the type of environment and culture that I wanted to have for a school. You know, this STEM provided that opportunity for me to live out that dream and yeah. um, and build that. Special place in your heart? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. always? <laughs> always, always. Uh, so you were hired at STEM to, what was your exact position at that time? The elementary principal. Elementary principal, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. And you were here for eight years. What were some of the highlights, some of the things that really stand out? Well, of course, the students are special here yeah. at STEM, right? And um, it, that will not be matched <laughs> anywhere, uh -huh. right? And being able to really develop teachers and educators in that confidence of STEM education and implementing the, the technology, implementing the sciences and that engineering into what they do mm -hmm. as elementary professionals um, is really rewarding. It's, it's not something that teachers learn how to do in their program. Right. right? And so um, helping them to and supporting them to try new things, to have these ideas, these problem-based learning experiences and for themselves and, and then in turn providing that for students has been a real highlight. Now, before you were named interim CEO of COSAN Schools, you spent over four years as Director of Curriculum and Accountability. So let's talk about those years and what that job entails, just for those who don't know. Great. So, um, yeah, so we redesigned our administration team, and um, I stepped into the role of the Director of Curriculum and Accountability. And um, what that meant was, um, as a K-12 school, um, I would oversee all of the curricular aspects of um, planning, working with teachers, ensuring we're aligning to the standards, and um, bringing in field trips and opportunities for students, just ensuring that that was happening um, in that continual K-12 scope and sequence and alignment. That's a lot of logistics and scheduling <laughs> and planning. How were you able to do all of that? Uh, well, it, it's a challenge, right? Yeah. Um, especially because my background was primarily in K-8. Um, then learning the, the academics behind high school uh, was something that was exciting to me and uh, really helped to spark my interest. I was able to really identify that, that full um, scope and sequence of students like from when they start in kindergarten until when they graduate and beyond because in that time we started P-TECH as well. So um, having those opportunities to really be able to vision and, um, and bring that to life what that looks, a comprehensive education for students and what that looks like for them. And so that type of job, what was the busiest time of year for you? Was it 
right before the school year started or was it more during the summer months when you were getting the, the new school year prepared? Um, it's a combination because one of the things I had the opportunity to do in that role was to work with teachers in their teams um, and really help them understand standards and planning and bringing PBLs into their uh, curriculum and those types of things as well. So um, it happened throughout the year, but the accountability part of my role was uh, the data the assessments, um, those pieces that every school are required to um, meet and required to implement. And so the beginning of the year was a little um, more busy when it comes to right. that data and accountability because we were, um, you get the raw scores in July and August, so you spend that time um, digging into how our students' achievement levels came to be and what they how they progressed yeah. um, and then working with our school accountability committee to align and write our unified improvement plan that's required by the state and then working with the building leaders and the department leaders to help each department determine what are the goals that they have for students that you, you know each year and so I like data. <laughs> People know that about yeah, me. Yeah. And so um, I enjoyed that aspect too, um, just seeing the outcomes of our students' achievement and what they're able to do. Yeah, well, the PBL units are just getting more exciting by the year mm -hmm. and more creative. Really impressed to see what the teachers come up with in the classroom. And I'm sure it's exciting for you to see what they come up with as well. It is. It's very exciting, and, and it makes every year a little different, which yeah. is nice. You've probably come across a lot of different students who have moved on to do great things. Uh -huh. uh, we see that every year. Um, anything specific that you're really fond of or something that you're going to carry with you besides just the, the student experiences? Um, I think that, I mean, everything, it's hard to pinpoint one, yeah. um, but um, it, it just amazes me that, that when we allow educators and we provide that autonomy for them to really focus on students and what the individual students understand and what they need to know mm -hmm. and how they want to bring to life what they learn, that's what's passionate in, for me. That, that, that's what really brings to light um, just where students can go, like uh, that understanding that even the youngest student, a kindergarten or first grader, have questions, have um, passions, and um, we provide them the opportunities and um, allow them to shine and not letting them, like not holding them back. So many right. educational systems hold students back. Yeah, you know. so you've seen education in general really evolve over the course of 33 years, yes. probably good and bad mm -hmm. uh, along the way. Right. What would you say is the current state of, of education in Colorado? Some of the challenges maybe that still need to be overcome and mm -hmm. some of the good things that, that are happening. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, um, you know, there's so many great things, you know, having that opportunity to, to have charter schools or other schools that provide experiences for students and can keep this mission and vision alive and yeah. and focused. Um, I think some of the the negative things are um, sometimes it's it's a challenge to ensure that you're meeting the needs of students but at the same time needing to follow the laws and things that are changing, curriculum that changes, standards that change, mm -hmm. right? And um, having a seat at the table in that. So earlier in my career, um, I did work more closely with the State Department, right? Um, looking at those standards and, and helping to make those decisions um, to bring to life what's best for students. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there'll always be challenges like that. Um, but as teachers, I would encourage them um, to take on those response or those uh, opportunities when there's a leadership opportunity at the state level to mm -hmm. get involved, you know, or politically to get involved and see what happens in the 
in the big picture of how you can make a difference. Yeah, I mean, every year it comes with a new set of challenges in, in education. Mm -hmm. Really, in any industry, you have to evolve along the way, but with that comes rewards too. And I'm sure mm -hmm. as you look back on your career, you see a lot of good and a lot of rewards along the way mm -hmm. and probably growth uh, as your career went on. Um, anything else that you wanted to add about, about this as you look back? One thing, actually, one thing I wanted to ask you was just about uh, the staff culture here, because obviously a lot of people stay here because of that. There's a lot of positivity. Mm -hmm. The staff here is really close. I look at it as my second family. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you feel the same. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, it is hard to, to step away, but I know that the school's in good hands, and I know I won't be far away. <laughs> so I'll be watching and, um, yeah. you know, come back for graduations and different opportunities like that. So I'm looking forward to just taking a little bit of a back seat mm -hmm. and, um, you know, watching new leadership head things in in directions that will continue with our never, with our model of never stop innovating. I bet you're going to miss a lot of people here. We're going to yeah. certainly miss you, but like you said, you're going to be close by. Yeah. So that's a good thing. <laughs> you're great. Great. I'm trying yeah. not to make you cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it's emotional, especially when you look back at, at such a, a great career. Um, but like you said, you, you gave it a hard look and a close look, and now was the right time <laughs> to uh, you know spend retirement with your husband and your family. And uh, we wish you the, yeah. the best of luck. Anything else Thanks. that you wanted to add as we wrap up here? Uh, I just would thank the community and yeah. everyone that's supported me along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Keep it right here on STEM School Hounds Ranch social media. Follow us for updates and don't be a stranger. We're going to be I checking will. in with you. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you later.